Hello, Yins, and welcome back to the shop. Before I get into literally anything in this video, I just wanted to tell you all that I freaking love you. And thank you so much for all of the support and all of our recent ridiculousness. Myself and the whole team greatly appreciate you. So, because we appreciate you so much, I'm actually listening to your comments, your emails, your DMs, and all of the interactions you guys give me. And what I know is a lot of you are beginners and that you're looking to get in to more of the shop work or woodworking or making of anything. And so we decided to make you this video. Now, to begin with, we're going to assume a few things here. One is that you have a tape measure, a square, some sort of straight edge, pencils, glue, uh, basically a lot of those like regular ass things. Those are not included in like these 10 tools for beginners. And then from there, we're going to break this down into my first five tools and then the level up from there. So it's like five and five. And that's, and with math, that equals 10. So let's get into it. All right, Yin, so the first tool that I suggest for pretty much any workshop, wood shop, or homeowner is gonna be a drill. Now I have a drill and impact driver here because I do believe they go hand in hand. So to start, what is the difference in a drill and impact driver? You got a drill has a chuck. This is called a chuck. It allows you to put pretty much any bits you want in it um, because it tightens over, it has a collet in there and it tightens over whatever that bit might be. It also has variable speeds and variable options for drilling. And this one also has an option like hammer drilling. An impact driver is, is for power and speed and can only use impact ready bits. Um, you can find a lot of these in combo kits. You see us using the impact driver a ton here because they are very fast, but they do take a little bit of time to get used to. So you'll see a lot of beginners using a drill. This is an extremely affordable set from Ryobi. Ryobi makes extremely affordable tools. If you're looking to get into cordless tools, definitely want to check them out. 18 volt if you can afford it. And I would definitely suggest your first set of drills being in 18 volts because more power, the better, right? You never want to not have enough power when you can have more, but there are options out there for less. We've got these 12 volts here. We love these. We use them a ton since they showed up. They're compact. They pack plenty of punch for small things, but we, we can't do any of the, we can't fasten into walls. We can't set studs. We can't do any of that bigger stuff with them because they just don't have the beef. There's tons of brands out there, tons of options out there. We love any of them pretty much. We use you know, DeWalt Daily, Makita Daily, Milwaukee Daily. Um, and you've seen a lot of these in our content because they're all really, really good. But if you're looking to get into them yourself, consider the battery platform you wanna be on long-term and buy that first. Drill and impact driver, the first thing you should buy, whether you're in the wood shop, workshop, or a homeowner, in my opinion. All right, so the number two tool you're gonna to want as a beginner uh, workshop or the home in my suggestion is a circular saw. There's tons of options out there. You've got uh, the you know, seven and a quarter standard sidewinder saw, which is gonna look like this. This is not a seven and a quarter, but uh, you get the look. You're gonna have your rear handled worm driven saws that look like this, corded and battery powered, tons of options out there. Get whatever you can afford. I suggest a seven and a quarter inch saw that plugs in the wall. I've got a DeWalt one, ironically I left it at the house, um, that I've had for about 10 years now. It just stays at the house because it's always there to use. And it works phenomenally. You can use it with a straight edge. You can do some really precise stuff. And it, they are like one of the most versatile tools to have in a shop. Whether you're framing, whether you're building furniture, whether you're going over to your buddy's house to chop up firewood, circular saw gets it done and they're great to have. Now, a couple things you're gonna to wanna to consider are the battery platform you own because you just bought a drill and impact because you're listening to me. If you're going cordless, is it in the same battery platform? That's important. Also, the size of the saw. If you're gonna be cutting tabletops and stuff, go with the seven and a quarter inch. Skill saw here makes a 10 inch. They also make this 16 inch beam saw. They've got monsters. When you get used to using this in your workflow, the next evolution is going to be the track saw. A bunch of brands have them. You guys have seen them in my content and they also work amazingly. The last thing is going smaller. If you're doing stuff that say you're on a ladder or you need to be really mobile, they've got five and three quarter inch. They've got six and a half inches out there. Tons of options, but we recommend the seven and a quarter inch regular sidewinder plug in the wall circular saw. Gonna be the number two tool that you should have. All right, Yins, the number three tool that I suggest for all beginners is gonna be the clamp. 
hence why we're in clampy corner. These are literally the first two clamps I ever purchased. This is called an F style clamp, as you can see. I don't know which way it comes up on camera, but it looks like the letter F. Um, highly versatile, very, very, very popular, and very affordable. These basically get the job done. Now, are they the best? No. Um, but if you're getting into it, you definitely want to look into them. Now, there's a ton of options out there to go with these, and you see them in my content a lot. One of the most popular is going to be what's called a parallel clamp. These are going to be the most expensive option, most likely, in most cases. Um, but they are very specific to woodworking, and they also do a very, very good job. They give what's called parallel clamping pressure uh, and help panel glue ups a ton. They were one of the first upgrades that I chose to get into when I bought more clamps after that first clamp. These are kind of a newer innovation, and these are a step up from what's called a pipe clamp. Um, and these are an I-beam clamp made by Bessie. As you guys know, Bessie's a sponsor of ours, and that's why you see a lot of red clamps from me. Um, but any of the brands are pretty decent. Bessie makes the best, and then everything else after. But you can get the job done with pretty much anything. These are gonna be able to apply a lot more clamping pressure, as is a pipe clamp. The third most common clamp you're gonna see in my shop is gonna be the squeeze clamp. And this is a squeeze clamp. Pretty much use it with one hand. We use them for a lot of things, mostly just quick kind of clamp ups. We do not glue up panels with these because even though they do have great clamping pressure, they don't work as well. But once you start to get a bunch of clamps, they're really nice to have. And then Bessie also makes these single-handed geared clamps that you only need to use one hand to adjust and to tighten. Also another phenomenal option, but as you get up there in convenience, you get up there in price. And not all of them are a necessity. So number two option, for all of yins, in my opinion, in a wood shop at least, is gonna be the clamps. All right, yins, the number four tool that I suggest for a beginner wood shop or workshop or whatever is a table saw. Here is my table saw, but this wasn't the first saw I owned. What I worked on first was, it's called a job site saw. And you guys have probably seen this in some of my home remodeling projects. This is our cordless job site saw. This runs with, it's a, I think it's a 10 inch saw. Um, it's got a little blade in there, and, and just this one just happens to be cordless. I have a corded DeWalt one as well. Brand doesn't really matter. The concept is it's small, it's lightweight, it's portable, and it's easy to use, um, and also pretty affordable to get into. I suggest getting into the table saw because I think the table saw for woodworking is the most versatile tool in the shop. I think a lot of woodworkers feel the same. So getting into one as quickly as you can in, in, in your woodworking is going to help you. Um, there's a lot of phenomenal woodworkers out there who work on literally just job site saws. Uh, my favorite is going to be Tamar from 3x3 Custom. She's had a job site saw forever and she does incredible work. So you don't need this big old beefy guy down here to be good. With that though, there's a lot of options out there. So you've got, like I said, your job site saw. The next level is called a hybrid saw. I used to have one of those in my first shop. You guys remember that DeWalt saw that I had? That was what you call a hybrid saw. And then you have your cabinet saw, which is what this guy is. This is a five horsepower saw. This is pretty much the last saw I'll probably ever own. Going bigger than this after this is for mostly industrial applications. So you don't need to get into a crazy big saw. It is nice to have and it does help. It's going to be the biggest purchase, but also the most versatile thing in your wood shop. And something that I highly, highly suggest getting into as fast as possible. If you're gonna save up for anything. Make sure that it's this. It doesn't need to be a miter saw. It doesn't need to be a joiner. This guy, table saw, first big purchase. Uh, and if you can't go big first, go with the job site. You heard? The number five tool that I'm gonna suggest for the beginner wood shop is going to be the planer. The planer is the tool that makes your stuff, your wood, parallel. It doesn't make it flat, it makes it parallel. You need to understand that. The most important reason for having a planer is because you can thickness materials to your desired thickness. It's incredible. I've had this lunchbox planer, this is a 12 inch, for seven or eight years now. It's like, it's the first one I bought. Um, I bought it as absolutely soon as I could in order to basically use materials that were larger and make them smaller. And these things work great. A lot of people get started with them. You can also take them to the job site. They do weigh like 80 pounds, but they get the job done. They do have their limitations as far as cut capacity, horsepower, and I, I used to pop the, the limit on the amount of, I guess, electricity going to this thing all the time when I was using it, and I hated that. So other options out there are just gonna be a few other brands. DeWalt also makes a 13 and a half inch. This is really nice. 
Uh, this one has the planar head moves up and down, the 13 and a half, I believe, is the same, except the whole unit is basically the head. They're both really, really common, and you'll see them a lot throughout a lot of people's stuff. This is what is called an electric hand plane. It can do planing, but it's not a planer. And this is also your traditional hand plane. This is a joiner plane because it's for joining, but it can make sides flat. It's just a long way of going about it in a more traditional sense uh, than you know just, just running it through a machine. I do preface that to use this, you do need to buy your lumber with at least one flat side in order to make sure that you're getting things parallel. Um, and then once you want to upgrade from this little lunchbox here, you can come over to what you're used to seeing in my content, which is the 20 inch helical head planer that you guys have been seeing in my stuff for years. This, besides the table saw, was the first major upgrade I made to my shop because it increases capacity a ton. The helical head in this thing is amazing. A lot of people will argue that, you know, besides the saw stop, the helical head for joiners and planers is the biggest advancement in woodworking technology that's been like the last like 50 years. A big beefy planer is phenomenal to have, but not a necessity. You can still buy your lumber S4S, but you can get much more affordable stuff that isn't like that and then thickness it with your planer. So number five get yourself a planner. Before we dive into the rest of the tools, I want to thank our sponsor on this video, Woodcraft. Woodcraft is a huge supporter of my channel and the woodworking community. If you guys are looking to get into woodworking, it's the best place to start. They're going to have almost everything you need, especially the tools we've got listed here. I've got links down below to everything if you want to check those out as well. But I would suggest finding a local woodcraft store, getting in there, making friends with whoever's running it, and being awesome. We love our store and we know you guys will love yours. Check out Woodcraft down below and get into the goodness that is Woodcraft. Now, thank you guys for sponsoring this one and let's get back to the video. All right, the number six tool that you're going to purchase after you have those first five. You gotta get those first five first. Then you can get into these. That tool is going to be the joiner. Myself, this is my third joiner. And what the joiner does is it creates a flat surface. The reason I have the planer before the joiner is because you can use a hand plane to flatten a surface, which is much cheaper and affordable to get into, and then plane things. You can also purchase wood with a flat surface or have one surface jointed at your lumber yard to save you money and save you time. The joiner ends up becoming a convenience thing for buying rough lumber for the most part. Like I said, creates a flat surface and then you run it through your planer to you know, make the parallel surface. And then this also gives you your square edge. Like I said, this is my third one. My first one was a six inch joiner that I bought on Craigslist. So for all of you out there, my suggestion is to find the best quality, cheapest, six inch joiner you can on whatever repurposed market there is out there for you. The joiner is a machine that's pretty basic and you can pretty much get a decent quality one on a, the used marketplace uh, when you're getting started. Second joiner I had was an eight inch uh, Powermatic that you guys probably saw a few years ago if you've been watching my stuff. Um, and then this is a 12 inch joiner planer combo. We have it for the, the width it's to, to be able to plane our joint wider boards. And I highly suggest helical head if you can afford it. Straight knives are, are not bad. They just, you gotta replace them more often. Um, but the joiner does allow you to uh, square lumber quickly and allows you to buy lumber cheaper. Um, and if that is the route you're trying to go with your woodworking is to get your most affordable raw materials, a joiner is definitely gonna be next. But like I said, I prefer getting a planer first because I already talked about it. So I don't need to repeat myself. But yes, joiner number six. So the number seven tool that I'm gonna suggest for the beginner woodworker is gonna be the pocket hole jig. And for all of you out there that think I hate the pocket hole jig, I do. And it's because a lot of people misuse it. With that, the pocket hole jig is mostly intended to be used with three quarter inch material for carcass building. And learning to build cabinets is an extremely important and versatile skill set for the woodworker. As much as people use this thing to bang two by fours together to make stuff, I got started doing that. I, I'm, I'm not gonna say I'm not, haven't been there. It's just not what this joinery method was intended to do. I highly advocate for using this tool properly. There's multiple options out there. The easiest to get into is going to be this little guy. It's just called the R3, I think, or used to be. Um, I have like three or four of these and we use them all the time for our carcass building and stuff. Um, Armor Tools has this really cool jig. 
um, for pocket holes. Um, there's a couple companies that make them similar to this now. Craig is like the king of pocket holes and, and they also have something similar. I think it's their Cape 5 or 4 or whatever. And then Craig also makes this incredibly amazing Foreman, which we use for pretty much all of our carcass building. But the reason I suggest getting into the pocket hole jig is one, because you can learn to use hidden fasteners, and two, you can pretty much learn to make cabinets. Just don't abuse it. Like, you should not be building farmhouse or trestle style tables with pocket holes. Trust me, I get enough DMs and comments on things exploding apart and people not understanding why, and it's because they use pocket hole joinery and not like real joinery. Just take the time to learn how to do any type of other joinery for woodworking besides pocket holes, and you'll see and you'll understand why. I love them, but I love them being used correctly. Number seven, the pocket hole jig. All right, real quick, just to remind you, remember these are in clusters of five. They're not in a specific order. Um, so by saying that this is the number eight, it could actually be six. It doesn't matter. Just buy these after you buy the first five, in my, in my opinion. Uh, the number eight tool we've got here is the miter saw. The miter saw is an extremely common saw in pretty much every shop and garage across the country, here in America at least. Um, and it's because it's, it's a great tool. Uh, we love our miter saw. We use it for rough sawing. I've had a couple of them. We have a 12 inch DeWalt miter saw. This is a 12 inch Makita miter saw. I have a 12 inch Bosch miter saw. You guys want me to do a review with this in the Bosch. If you are watching this and you want that review, it's not gonna happen. Buy this one, don't buy the Bosch. This has better dust collection and I'm in a workshop where dust collection matters. There's your answer. All of them cut pretty comparably in the same for my applications. Trim carpenters would rip my head off if I said that out loud. So with it, you wanna be thinking about cut capacity and uh, the, I guess, the, the versatility of the uh, miter itself. Here we have a sliding saw, and this is kind of what I'm talking about with versatility. How much distance can you get away from the fence? A fixed saw isn't gonna have as much distance. Here I think we can cut up to 13 and a half inches almost, um, which lets me cut wider boards uh, on, on rough saw I'm here, instead of having to do it on a table saw, which saves me time. Also, I can think I can do about five inches on the vertical cut um, with a 12 inch saw. A 10 inch saw, you're only gonna get about, I think three or three and a half or something like that. Um, so that goes into the equation as well. Also is the miter. This saw specifically, miters left and right, and we also have a beveling on the back side. We never use it in the shop and I'm not gonna mess with it because we have this thing square. But that lets you tilt left and right. All that stuff matters for some people. For our shop, we're cutting things square or at miters. We don't really need to use the bevel. So a 12 inch saw sliding or gliding uh, works really well for us. And in most wood shops, I would assume the same. Uh, and it's gonna be my suggestion for your number eight tool because it's gonna help you with cutting things down quickly. And if you set it up properly, you can actually cut things to final length on it as well. Uh, I know a bunch of guys that do that and it works really great for them. So, Look into them, uh, tons of options out there I'm not gonna dive into, but the miter saw, number eight. All right, tool number nine, and I'm gonna get a lot of pushback on this one from woodworkers, is the router. The reason I have the router kind of this low on the list is because it, it's a terrifying tool, it really is. There's a, uh, a cutter head spinning at thousands of RPMs in your hand, um, and it can be scary. It's the reason I have it down the list is because I, I advocate for becoming comfortable within the wood shop before getting into a router. But that being said, the router is probably the most versatile tool in your shop. You could do the most with one of these um, compared to what you can do with everything else besides maybe the table saw, that, that's arguable. But um, we have a, a shit ton of routers. Um, here we've got, what is that, six, seven. I can't count, seven. Seven routers and I think I have four more throughout the shop and we use them for a, a ton of different things you know we have big beefy ones for flattening we have just general uh you know regular i think that's a three-quarter horsepower routers that we have dedicated heads in them whether it's a chamfering bit whether it's a flush cutting bit um, i keep a dedicated bit uh, for templating in this guy for cutting dovetails. We keep a dedicated bit in the CNC shop and a cordless palm router for cutting tabs on things out of the CNC. So you can easily see uh, how having a bunch of them can become in handy. But with that, it's because they're so versatile. You can cut almost, almost literally anything you want, whether it's joinery, whether you're doing flattening, whether you're trying to cut straight edges. Um, and that's because there's so many different bits out there. The router is definitely a tool you need to have in your shop. You just wanna make sure that you are being safe and you're being careful. 
The last thing I'm going to suggest if you're getting into buying one is keep your eye open for sales because you can typically snag up guys like this in pairs during the holidays sometimes or in bundles with other tools. Um, they become super affordable. And my last suggestion is going to be for woodworking, try and get a plunge router base and a fixed router base. You have the plunge and then you've got a fixed. Whoa! This is a palm router. This is kind of a standard router and the handles and everything uh, get into it, but I would suggest these routers like here, your standard three quarter horsepower. This is a fixed paste. This is your plunge base. Get her done. All right, and the last tool I think uh, you should have in a beginner wood shop is a drill press. Reason being is similar to the joiner, you can find them very affordable in the used marketplace and they do have a lot of versatility. A drill press is gonna give you an opportunity to create nice, clean, straight holes, um, which if you're using uh, like exposed fasteners in any type of your woodworking, uh, you can at least make them look clean and you can make sure the holes are perfectly perpendicular to whatever you're cutting. But it also is, it's just one of those staples that when you need it, you're glad you have it. And one of those things that when you don't have one, you drastically miss it. I upgraded to this floor model uh, a few years ago and, and this thing's a monster. I'll probably never have anything bigger than this. Um, and we use it a ton uh, for a lot of stuff. Uh, mostly in our shop is going to be cutting holes specifically in places that we want them because you can use a fence on a table and you can set up stops and guides for repeatable plunging action with the cutter um, as well as we have a plug cutter bits that we use to fill holes and stuff um, in, in, in a lot of the furniture if we're using like a, a face screw or something that we want to look pretty. You're definitely going to want to use the drill press in order to do that. Bench top or floor, you're in a good place if you have a drill press in your shop, you've got a lot of things that you're gonna find use for it with. Um, I've had one since, since the minute I found a good price on one. Uh, I used to have a bench top model and after I upgraded to this, I doubt I'll ever get rid of it. So number 10, the drill press. And that's gonna be a wrap on this one. I understand it can be intimidating to get into woodworking and confusing, but hopefully this cleared some things up for you guys. I have links down below to all kinds of tools that I suggest and I use if you're interested. Also, if you wanna support the channel, buy some damn merch. We're working hard on it and we know you guys are loving it. And lastly, I genuinely do really appreciate each and every one of you for tuning in. And if you wanna see another tips video, I've got it linked up for you right here and I'll catch you over there.